it's Booty Quake here from Roller Derby Athletics. Today I have an insider interview from Roller Derby World Cup. While I was in Dallas last weekend for the Roller Derby World Cup, I got a chance to catch up with one of the training staff from Team Canada Women's Roller Derby, Johnny Quad. He filled me in on some of the insider info on what Team Canada was doing to prepare for the Cup. Here's our interview. All right, here we are with Johnny Quad. Johnny Quad, tell us a little bit about your uh, relationship with Team Canada. Uh, I'm the strength and conditioning coach. It's really important, I think, strength and conditioning. Uh, it would be unusual for a sport played at this level and of this caliber to not have uh, uh, someone whose task it was dedicated to strength and conditioning. So I submitted an application um, just as if I was applying for the coach and made the case uh, lit quite literally that the best jobs I've ever had are the ones that, uh, you know, that, that weren't actually posted or advertised. I kind of created the job and to the credit of Ewan and Mac and, and Brian and the skaters on Team Canada, they all saw the value. Uh, and so I was given the title. Uh, and um, yeah, it's been great. That was about just as we started forming it up a year ago. So what what I did was I I, I thought well, first thing you want to do is you can't me change what you don't you know you measure right. So you had I sent out a, a survey monkey to just get a sense of where everybody was at in terms of their own fitness and what their own practices are. Like, do you do yoga? Do you do, do you do weights? Do you, and then do you know what plyo is? Do you know what proprioception is? And so it was a really good sort of way to just pull the team and get a feeling for where everybody was at because. I know I, I certainly didn't want anyone who who was afraid of uh, wasn't not comfortable in the gym environment, you know, because so much even you know the best program that anybody can do is the one that they'll stick to, right? Right. So I wasn't going to force anybody. I'd say if you're here, let's not measure you against the entire team. Let's measure you against yourself and see if we can't make some sort of incremental approval over the next three, six, nine, twelve months. Mm -hmm. And so was there an area, was it um, you know, more strength based, more power based, more of endurance course, yeah. or all of the above? Yeah, and so, so on once I athlete? looked at, at the basics like cardio and, and strength and power, strength endurance and those sort of basic things, I said, okay, here's, here's some things that I would recommend that mm -hmm. uh, you work on or that, we, that you could do. Basically, the focus I think primarily, and, and as the data has shown over the last uh, little while, that high intensity interval training is probably the best bang for the buck for people mm -hmm. who are uh, pressed for time or have other mm -hmm. careers or lives and certainly something that's easy to follow along on YouTube and whatnot. So the focus for me was on a lot of body weight stuff, minimal materials mm -hmm. and then we supplement it with other things like sandbags, um, things that you could make like taking an old skate bag, fill it with rocks and doing some workouts like that. So really trying to take away barriers to mm -hmm. entry for the athletes. So they never felt like they had to spend money to do anything. Right. And so we, we, we filmed the videos in the park. We do, we, you know, our, our agility ladder was done with chalk. Right, you yeah. Know? So we're trying to create an environment where people who didn't feel that finances were an obstacle, which I sure. think is really important for roller derby. Yeah. Of the skaters who really, you know, kind of um, engaged a lot or who had more experience with the weight room and so mm -hmm. forth, was weights a big part of their training? Yeah, absolutely. And I do think you see a difference for skaters that oh, yeah. do weight training? Absolutely. So that the, the correct balance of flexibility and power training will do a couple things. One, um, it'll reduce injury and it'll improve your performance on the track. And I don't have the data, it just isn't enough sort of a, a pool large enough. But I'd say anecdotally, the, the amount of sort of incidental penalties, like low blocks caused by you losing your balance and stuff, mm -hmm. are, are reduced across uh, the length of a tournament like this. So the other thing that I did was, uh, uh, and this is something that came out of the Alpine Ski programs as, as an aggressive way of trying to reduce injuries, was to add some basic sort of like ACL and PCL uh, prevention. A PCL is kind of an unusual injury for athletes, but in derby, because oftentimes the, the, you'll come down hard on Fall the knee, kneecap, yeah. that'll pop a PCL. So looking at a state, st so proprioception is really good for keeping people up on their feet, but also just to remove the sort of incidental fall so we did do some things like with like adding weight like a skate bag or a full water bottle where people were doing lunges that were forward and then pushing back exploding mm -hmm. back which helps work the, the hamstring and then this other move that came from the Norwegian uh, Alpine ski team which is like a nor sort of they call it a, a, a Nordic hamstring where you have oh, a yeah. partner hold your calves down and you let yourself go and you try and hold yourself back and then sort yep. of fall to plank. So that kind of stuff I think has been really, really helpful in, in reducing injuries? injuries and reducing penalties. Fantastic. Yeah, proprioception I think is super, super important, especially if you're in a path. 
because it's that, that moment where you know, these are like little sort of RFIDs and GPS for all the parts of your body, right? So if you're in a pack and you're thinking about strategy and not having to worry about where your body is in space, and somebody comes and hits you, you're going to be balanced and, and mm -hmm. recover. So I would say that any serious roller derby program uh, would involve some high intensity interval training, uh, basic body weight stuff from, from plyo, um, and I would consider proprioception and yoga as sort of the other basic platform. Mm -hmm. Kind of a tripod. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, well, I'm sure you must be really proud of how Team Canada did, and uh, I want to congratulate you and the team, of course, for uh, performing so strongly in the tournament. Well, thank you very much. Thanks so much for your time, Johnny Quad. You're most welcome. It's me again, and I'm here to recap some of the great points that Johnny Quad made about his program for Team Canada. First of all, you can't manage what you don't measure, so setting a baseline for each of your athletes is an important part of beginning a new training program. You can always use the RDA standardized roller derby fitness test as a baseline for your athletes, and I've put the link here for you to check out any time. Second, the best program is one that your athletes will follow. So remove the barriers to entry. If no one on your team uses the gym, then doing weights as part of your fitness program is probably not a strong strategy. Next, JQ said that high intensity interval training is probably the best bang for your buck in a program where you're somewhat limited on time and resources. There are tons of HIIT workouts available on roller derby athletics. Check them out anytime and on our YouTube channel, of course. The goals were to reduce injury before the games and to reduce incidental penalties during the games. That's a little different from, I think, how some people think of their training programs, but having a healthy team that's not in the box is one of the best ways to win a roller derby game. Finally, Johnny Quad's three main elements for any basic roller derby fitness program are high intensity interval training, plyometrics using body weight, and yoga or other proprioception or stability training. Thanks again to Johnny Quad for this great interview. I'm Booty Quake. See you next time.